while leading the battle against Russia on the ground, the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, is also using all diplomatic channels and platforms to drum up support for his country, which has been witnessing a mounting offensive by the Russian military. The Ukrainian leader addressed the U.S. Congress earlier today and reiterated his call for assistance from the West. He was greeted by a standing ovation by the U.S. lawmakers. Zelensky urged the U.S. Congress to do more to help Ukraine's fight against Russia. The Ukrainian president has been seeking action on two main fronts. One, to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine to protect the country and its people from the Russian air assaults. And two, to supply Ukraine with better, stronger aircraft and defense systems. Zelensky had ma has made similar appeals earlier at the EU parliament, the UK parliament and the Canadian parliament. This is a terror that Europe has not seen, has not seen for the last 80 years, and we are asking for a reply, for an answer to this terror from the whole world. Is this a lot to ask for, to create a no-fly zone over Ukraine to save people? Is this too much to ask, a humanitarian no-fly zone, something that Russia would not be able to terrorize our free cities? If this is too much to ask, we offer an alternative. You know what kind of defense systems we need. S-300 and other similar systems. You know how much depends on the battlefield, on the ability to use aircrafts. Powerful, strong air aviation to protect our people, our freedom, our land. Aircraft that can help Ukraine, help Europe. And you know that they exist and you have them. But they are on earth, not in the Ukrainian sky. They do not defend our people. The Ukrainian president even called for tougher sanctions against Russia. He urged the U.S. President Joe Biden to ensure that American markets are shut for Russian goods. Now it is true in the darkest time for our country, for whole of Europe. I call on you to do more. New packages of sanctions are needed constantly every week until the Russian military machine stops. Restrictions are needed for everyone on whom this unjust regime is based. We propose that the United States sanctions all politicians in the Russian Federation who remain in their offices and do not cut ties with those who are responsible for the aggression against Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky also cited Pearl Harbor and the 9-11 terror attacks while appealing to the U.S. Congress, where thousands of innocent lives were lost. He said that his country has been experiencing the same for three weeks now. Remember Pearl Harbor, terrible morning of December 7th, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember it. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day in 2001, when evil tried to turn your city's independent territories in battlefields when innocent people were attacked, attacked from the air. Yes, just like no one else expected it, you could not stop it. Our country experienced the same every day, right now at this moment, every night for three weeks now. Zelensky even addressed Joe Biden directly, urging him to be the leader of peace. As, uh, and showed the U.S. lawmakers a heart, and showed the lawmakers a heart-wrenching video of ruined cities and injured Ukrainian civilians, including children. The video ended with Zelensky's appeal to close the Ukrainian airspace. Now I'm almost 45 years old. My age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children stopped beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the deaths. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians, and as the leader of my nation. I am addressing President Biden. You are the leader of this nation, of your great nation. I wish you could be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. U.S. and NATO allies have until now ruled out enforcing a no-fly zone over Ukraine. They say the move would drag them directly into the conflict with nuclear-armed Russia. 
The U.S. president has been reluctant when it comes to providing military assistance to Ukraine as well. He is facing criticism from the Republican Party for being too weak when it comes to tackling Russia. And now after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's emotional address to the American Congress, the pressure on Joe Biden has only multiplied. He is likely to announce $1 billion in new security assistance to Ukraine. Let's go straight across now to our correspondent, Susan Tehrani with us from New York and Anas Malik with us from Kiev uh, for more updates. Uh, Anas, coming to you first, uh, you've been reporting from Kiev for days now, helping us better understand the situation on the ground. Tell us more about the significance of these pleas that the Ukrainian president has been making. He's been consistent. He wants a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Well, that's something that has been uh, that has been a core demand or a key demand since this invasion began, uh, since the 24th of February. Uh, because for one reason, uh, the Ukrainian military or Ukrainian air forces, airfields have been damaged by the Russian side, and we're seeing air strikes being taken place, uh, being done by the Russian military. Uh, that's what the Ukrainian side says on civilian areas. As latest as today in the morning, where a strike took place uh, on what. What is believed were um, people buying bread in the eastern city of Chernaviv uh, and at least 10 people have been killed. Now that's one of the reasons uh, that uh, we've seen uh, uh, billboards going up or digital signboards going up around the city of Kiev with say NATO close the skies now uh, quote and that Ukrainians are not requesting they are begging unquote so that's that shows the amount of desperation that's here because the the Ukrainian side understands that uh, at this point of time it does not have the uh, air power to outdo the Russian uh, military or to to have to count the Russian military and that is one of the reason we saw this desperate uh, call or help cry for help as well or a reiteration of his stance today before the US Congress by uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Molly? Right. Uh, Susan, uh, just a while ago the Ukrainian President addressed the US Congress. He received a standing ovation. Uh, but what about more assistance, more military aid? How far is the US willing to go when it comes to helping Ukraine? There is bipartisan support here in the United States to help Ukraine in any way possible. And while the U.S. has been reluctant in imposing a no-fly zone because that would essentially put NATO member states and the United States at direct war with Russia and would start World War III, anything short of that, uh, the United States hasn't been stopping short of doing. There is one issue that perhaps the Republican Party has been uh, gaining momentum and calling for, and those are those MiG planes that the Biden administration had to uh, had a back and forth with with Poland uh, and that's something that perhaps uh, has been a bone of contention and we saw President Zelensky uh, talk about that as well during his speech. Uh, 200 billion dollars was allocated uh, 200 million dollars was allocated to Ukraine uh, aid uh, another 800 million dollars uh, the president uh, shortly is due to announce is due to announce uh, shortly in a televised speech that he's going to provide aid, possibly drones as well, explosive drones. So that'll bring the aid to about one billion dollars. Um, but you know, we'll we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see if that is enough. Uh, the plea by President Zelensky is uh, is something that hasn't been unnoticed on both sides of the aisle here in the United States, which, you know, as, with, as we've said time and again, is very rare to see this kind of bipartisan support, at least on a foreign policy issue, understandably. Indeed, Anas, I want to also ask you to summarize for us what the day has looked like today uh, in Kiev, uh, the situation on the ground. Uh, those attacks have continued for three weeks now. 
Well, yes, today marks uh, day 21st of the Russian invasion of the country of here where I am in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, Kyiv is under city uh, is under a curfew uh, for uh, the past 24 hours and it will last for another uh, 12 hours or so. It came into effect uh, uh, se uh, 8 uh, p.m. Uh, late evening yesterday and currently it's about 6 uh, 45 here on the dial. So about 24 hours it's been only um, uh, personnel of the armed forces or the law enforcement were allowed. Uh, minus that if you're from the medical services or essential services then you'd be allowed on the road otherwise uh, even if you have accreditation passes you would not be allowed on the road and that is uh, that's something that we saw being in enforced strictly then the shelling continued uh, the Russian forces progression or advancement uh, uh, towards Kiev by the looks of it it continues because the battle is literally at the gates both in the northeast and at the northwest uh, both sides it's about 25 kilometers from the capital city of Kiev uh, so uh, there was this grimness or tensions that could that can uh, that could have been felt uh, everything was closed not that it's not a ghost town the city is not a ghost town but uh, uh, the fact that it was under curfew just reiterated that uh, one thing more that I would like to add that uh, it was unclear why the curfew was imposed because there are a lot of speculations we had the three prime ministers from the uh, Czech Republic Slovenia and Poland visiting last night arriving late last night through train in the capital city of Kiev so somebody so some people said or there were speculations that uh, it could have been done because of that then there were speculations that the Ukrainian military wanted to go out against those saboteurs or who they believe were Russian facilitators and they wanted to carry out operation and that's as a consequence of which we saw intermittent gunfire as well uh, just around the corner about three to four kilometers from where I am uh, so uh, and then the other enunciation was that it could have been done possibly to avoid uh, civilians going out uh, amidst uh, a, a, a threat or a genuine threat of uh, the Russian uh, shelling or bombardment increasing towards the city. So uh, in the absence of a formal statement or clarity, there is anxiety that is there.